Michael Cantor, originally from New York, but I've been in the Boston area for over 46 years. Um, we've been in Somerville for the past, uh, it'll be nine years in October. The thing I love about Somerville is that it's a really activist community. We moved here and immediately met a lot of people who were eager to create a better world, a better society, and a better city. And they were, they were really out there. They weren't shy about it. This is important to them. Well, currently I work with everything from, uh, I run a business called Cambridge Naturals. We've had our business for 44 years. We're in Porter Square. We can, if we look, go outside our door, we can see Somerville from our door to echo Sarah Palin, who could see Russia from Alaska. Um, and I, I think that I, I'm active, one, in local business affairs. I'm a founding member of Cambridge Local First, promoting locally owned independent businesses, supporter of Somerville Local First, uh, more money that is spent locally at locally owned independent businesses spreads throughout the community versus supporting lo uh, multinational chains and the like. Uh, I'm also active in uh, mitigating climate change mostly through regenerative agriculture. I'm a known business advocate for raising the minimum wage. I'm a, on the board of Business for a Fair Minimum Wage, which is a national organization though headquartered in Boston. Uh, I make the case that raising the minimum wage is actually good for business, not to mention the people that will get higher wages. Um, and I'm also active on the side in, the, in political electoral campaigns. I'm Erin and I've been in Somerville on and off for almost 10 years. The first reason why I fell in love with Somerville is because it's so walkable. It just seems like a, a place where people can live and I was like thinking about this and actually like right down the street in the beginning when I moved here and I had like zero money. Block 11 actually at that time put out like their end of day baked goods, just do you remember? And I was like, it was, I had like no money and I was like surviving off of Block 11 like breads every day. I learned more about the government here and the like happiness question that was on the census and then I've just I continue to be impressed with the leadership in the city. Shape up Somerville, so cool that the Obamas were like, yeah, we'll integrate that into national policy. And of course the ABCs like we've talked about before, it's really cool to have this like urban agriculture piece that gives people the infrastructure to make things happen in the city. You know, with this Green Line extension, it's really exciting, but it, I think it's making us all a little bit nervous. I hope that the city continues to um, stand up for um, like a human place to live and takes care of the residents and um, really keeps in mind green spaces so that we have, um, so this like very human oriented community is sustained. One more thing I really want to say is that I'm so impressed with Jackie Rossetti. The messages that she sends about the construction going on, I truly am like studying the way that she puts out these messages because where I work, I forgot to mention this, I work at CIC in um, Kendall Square and there's this huge construction project going on on four sides of my building and I'm in charge of the communication to our clients and community about the construction and it has been awful. I hate it so much and like I just listen to Jackie's messages and I'm like if she can do it I can do it. Also it's just helpful. My name is Rebecca. I live right here in Union Square on Stone Avenue which is make a block that way maybe. Um, I've lived here for 23 years this summer. We moved in from out of town uh, we had no idea what was happening with rent control or what the neighborhoods were. So when we moved here, we just, when we were looking here rather, we fell in love with the diversity, we fell in love with the little parks around here. Um, and we stayed because it's accessible to Boston and Cambridge and other areas around here without being um, too overdeveloped or gentrified. At least back then it wasn't. <laughs> That's changing. Um, but hopefully it's changing for the better and that's one of the things that I like about it still. That um, people around here seem to have paid attention very thoughtfully to what's happened to other squares nearby. So hopefully we can learn from other people's challenges, other neighborhoods challenges, both with residential issues and my particular, my particular issue is um, artists and entrepreneurs and small business owners because we know from looking at the history of our house that this whole area used to be populated you know even from the mid last century with people who came here to start their business start their family 
you know, get their lives started and launch, right? So we want to preserve that that flavor in this neighborhood too, as well as the diversity, although that's really difficult. But we're on it, and that's what I love about Somerville, this part of it. And we love this market. This is one of the best farmers markets, I think, in this side of town. So that's that's the story. Hi, my name is Diane Carroll. What I love, love, love about Somerville was about 10 years ago, I went to a um, hard rock and roll metal show in Atlanta, Georgia. I get there and I walk upon this man and he's like seven foot tall, bigger and like 400 pounds, all muscle. And he told me, hello, my name is Michael Panico. And he was the nicest person in the world to me. And then we started traveling together um, as a group from the Southeastern Conference and then all these people from Boston. And I was always picked and made fun of growing up. But the first time I was ever showed a lot of like just empathy, like even if I did annoy them, they were just so nice to me and they thought I was special and they listened to my ideas and it chokes me up thinking about it now, how people can have an effect on you. They were all from Somerville, but then they got pushed out because you guys got really expensive. <laughs> so I'm Suzanne Bremer. I live uh, in Union Square at Prospect Hill right up that way. We've lived here since forever, since before the Independent was the Independent. Uh, we remember the day when the first coffee shop here in Union Square sold leather jackets to stay afloat. So what I love about Somerville is the vibrant energy and the creativity that it sparks. So much so that we're now talking about the upcoming exhibit at the Somerville Museum that's called Triple Decker Ecology. This is an urban environment. That's one of the things I love about Somerville. It is a dynamic urban environment. We are gritty here and we are creative. Um, so Triple Decker Ecology, which will be opening on October 11th at the Somerville Museum, um, one of the things that comes to mind about urban ecology and climate change and flooding here in Somerville is the time that the police station parking lot flooded, and I think we lost 18 motorcycles. So as part of this exhibit, I would like to, to put together a tribute to that event um, as part of this Triple Decker Ecology exhibit at, Summer, at um, Somerville Museum. Now, my friend Rebecca talked about where she likes to eat here in Union Square, and our go-to, and it has been for years, is Taco Bob's, Cantina Mexicana. That is our, where we get our, our nachos for Saturday lunch. Um, we also, for a real special treat, go to Back Bar, which has amazing bespoke cocktails. And then for special events, our, our new favorite is Juliet's, which is as close to having a meal in Paris I think you can get on this side of the Atlantic. So thank you, Scott, uh, Somerville Media Center, for um, asking us to tell our stories. Thank <laughs> you.